In this clip, I will discuss total differentials. We'll start with the univariate version. It seems a little bit overpowered, but we'll see the use when we come to the multivariate version. And we start with something we discussed previously, the equation of a tangent at a particular point to a function. So this red bit, this is some sort of function. Clearly, it's not a linear one. That will be important, that aspect later. And let's say we are at a particular point. x0 uh, is our argument input, and then the function value is f of x0. So here we have at the x axis, we have x0, and we see the function value is f of x0. And at that point, we will look at the tangent. The question is then how y changes dy if x changes dx. Right? So the d stands for change. So let's do this by foot. We want to change the input argument x by a certain amount. So we'll go to this point x0 plus dx. And the difference between these two is that difference dx. So then we can see we can what our function value is. And that's that one up here. So if we could calculate the function value, then well, we'd be all good. But now we are asking if we are at point x0, fx0, what does the tangent tell us about what that value at x0 plus dx is most likely going to be? And that's this equation, dy equals f prime at x0 times dx. And if we use that, tangent, then we get to this point, f of x0 plus dy. The tangent seems to suggest that the value at the function of the function at x0 plus dx should be that value. Okay, and that is just the original value, f of x0 plus the dy. Now, clearly, that's not the same as the new function value. So, using the tangent to approximate the new value, will deliver an approximation error, that little red difference between the point on the function and the point on the tangent. So we call this also the linear approximation. And because we are making a linear approximation to what is a nonlinear function, we will make this approximation error. So we call this hash equation here also the total differential. It doesn't make so much sense this expression in this context but it will make more sense once we think about multivariate functions and that's what we're going to do on the next slide but in a univariate context the ten the tangent and this equation this hash equation gives us a total differential so let's move to the multivariate context we now have a function which is a function of two arguments, x1 and x2. We sometimes express this as this bold x, and then this could be any sort of number of inputs. But here we have two arguments, two input variables, and our function value y. So we are really thinking of a three-dimensional space. But the argument will extend to higher dimensions. And we'll again ask the same question. Let's start from a particular point at the value x1 naught and x2 naught and the function value at that space. And then we will be asking, okay, how is our function going to change if we change x1 and x2 by certain amounts, dx1 and dx2? And this hash equation again, the second equation here, which is really the multivariate um, equivalent of the previous univariate functions we had. And what you can see here are two partial derivatives. So f prime 1 is the partial derivative of f with respect to 1 and f prime 2 with respect to x2. And then we have these changes dx1, dx2, and that will deliver an approximate change in y. So this will again be a linear approximation. Now, a linear approximation in the univariate case was a line. When we are talking about a univariate function, now that we are talking about a bivariate function and we are thinking of a 3D space, 
a linear approximation will graphically be represented by a plane. And we will see that on the next slide, exactly here. So we have some sort of function here, it's a quadratic function, also has a log component, and this orange surface plot here, that is our function. It's a function of x1 and x2. So that's this function up here. What we now want to do is, as in the univariate case, we consider ourselves being at a particular point. So we are here at the point where both arguments take the value 4. So we, since we are talking about a particular value for x1, we call it x1 0, and that takes a value 4. And a particular value for x2, x2 0, also equal to 4. So in our picture, you can find the values of 4 for both arguments and we will be about at this point here. So there's a little blue dot and at this point we can see a plane and this is now the bivariate equivalent to our tangent. It's a tangent plane and that will be again a linear approximation of values of our function when evaluated at our point 4,4, 4, okay, at the point where x1 and x2 take the value 4. This plane is the graphical representation of our total derivative evaluated at x1, 0 and x2, 0. That was the hash equation we had previously. And we know we need the partial derivatives and then we have changes in x1 and x2. So here we can see that this plane has a negative slope in both directions, in the x2 direction at our particular point, I should always say at 4, 4, the tangent plane has a negative slope in the x2 direction and a negative slope in the x1 direction. And you should be able to establish that given the yellow function, given f of x. You can calculate, based on that f of x, the first derivative with respect to x1, f prime 1. And you can calculate the first derivative with respect to x2, f prime 2. And when you evaluate these first derivatives at our particular point, at 4, 4, you get a value, and that value should be smaller than 0, and I'll ask you to do that. And again, if you evaluate f prime 2 at 4, 4, you should also get a value of 0, indicating that our plane tilts downwards in both directions. So again, this plane it's a linear approximation with negative slopes in both directions. As it is a linear approximation to a nonlinear function, as you can see from the surface plot, but also from the equation itself, it's clearly a nonlinear function. We know that our linear approximation would give us approximation errors. So let's consider we were looking at this point, which is about the point 2, 2, and you can see that the plane gives us a different function value than the actual function. So our approximation error is here, as just graphically represented. So, we talked about total differentials and their graphical representations. It's important to understand that they exist both in the univariate function and the bivariate function. And of course, if we had three inputs, you can easily imagine what that would look like. We would have a third term. These tell us how, standing at a particular point of the function, we should expect the function to change if our input arguments change, so if x1 and x2 change. Let's look at a type of use of total differential you may encounter in economics. So say we have a function, which is a bivariate function. It has two arguments, x1 and x2. But now you also know through 
some other bit of economic in information that x1 is actually a function of x2. So in addition to this function f, we also have this function x1 equals g of x2. So x1 is some function of x2. Sometimes you will see this written like this. f of x1 being a function of x2, comma x2. Let's call this x1 equals g x2. Call this this the asterisk equation. Okay, and as you can see here, this is a univariate function. We will need it later, but for at this stage, no apparent reason. Let's just find the total derivative of this. So, merely applying the univariate total derivative, we get dx1 equals to g prime times dx2. So the g prime is now a univariate derivative. It's not a partial derivative, so it doesn't have a subscript. So let's just go back in our clip at the very beginning. Here we have this univariate hash equation. That was our total derivative in the univariate case. So here we are back. And let's go back to the u to the bivariate function, the f function, and let's write down the total derivative of this function. So we have y equals f of x1 and x2, where x1 is a function of x2. So let's do it very mechanically. dy is equal to f prime 1 times dx1 plus f prime 2 times dx2. But now, given our understanding of what x1 is, we understand that x1 is a function of x2, and therefore we can write dx1 as g prime times dx2. So let's just substitute this in. Hence, we end up with dy equals f prime 1 times g prime times dx2 plus, and now just the second term of our bivariate total differential, f prime 2 times dx2. We can now factor out the dx2, our change of the second argument. And what we get is f prime 1 times g prime plus f prime 2 is equal to dx2. What we learn from this is that changes in y, so dy, are purely explained by changes in x2. And here we have the direct effect, that is f prime 2 times dx2 but we also have the effect via x1. So a change in x2 makes for a change in x1 that's described by g prime, and then a change in x1 has a direct effect on y via f prime 1.